Uh, for years and years, you must be a student of the business, whatever that business is. Now, if it happens to be the business of medicine, and it happens to be in orthopedics, well then, this is the place you need to come, AOE. You know, 50 years is, it's humbling, right? It's very exciting. We're touching this many practices that's lasted 50 years. The 50th anniversary logo has a bone going through the O. And that will mean so much to the people who were only in Bones. Bones was started because the practice managers at the time realized that there was really not a specific orthopedic uh, professional association. It was all about sharing information uh, back in the 60s, early 70s. It's always a rowdy group and uh, there were some real characters in it. It was a group of pedic administrators and managers, very small, tight group of people. They had a vision. Bones was kind of formed in Alabama and the West Coast and bringing the two parts of the country together to form a national organization. Even though we're competing, we collaborate with each other, we help each other. When I was president, one of the big focus points was membership. You know, in 1988, when 1988 was our first real annual meeting that had 100 people in Newport, Rhode Island. We would go to different places where, there were, where the conference was going to be. For instance, if it was going to be in Milwaukee, we were going to take off on the um, Harley-Davidson, ride your bones to the conference, and something like that. <laughs> the conference committee had to, had to do the whole, uh, the, the whole conference. We had to, uh, you know, from the original discussions with the hotels. When I first got into this in the early 90s, I was at a conference, I said, whoa, man, don't we know it all? And then you start being on the receiving end of the change, and then you embrace that, and then the next thing you know, new technology, smarter, younger people come in and keep pushing you harder and challenging you further. An organization that was more loosely knit and more just about a, a, a network support system to an organization that's really embodied the full professionalism. We actually were able to have all, six of the founding members from 1969 attend that conference. The founding members them were so pleased to be remembered and included. We were able to bring together the legacy of some of the founding members from 1969 and, and have them interact with some new members from 1999. Even though I haven't been in orthopedics for 22 years, my closest friends are still Bones people. That's how I met a lot of my closest friends, because we were sat on committees together. We did the annual conferences together. The very first conference I went to was in Anaheim, and Patty Brewster was the president at the time. And I remember her standing on the stage and giving a speech and I just watched her and I basically said, you know, I don't think I could ever do that. I was encouraged to volunteer and I volunteered and uh, gradually my roles increased in the organization and then before I knew it, I was the president of the organization. I did that with the help of countless people, but especially Patty Brewster, who's now become a very dear friend of mine. The things that have touched me personally in 30 years is when I'm walking a hall and somebody stops me and says, you're the reason I went back to get my master's degree. We really, really care about our members and care for each other and lift each other up in times of need and everybody's honestly just a phone call or an email away and I think that's, that's what makes that's our group special. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you, you could get a master's degree in education just from your peers in this group. And there, I've never belonged to an organization so eager to help people develop in their career. You know, I go to other meetings and, and cover other topics, but this one's always much more uh, on target for what I do, for what I need. Uh, and I just found I've always got more from, from this organization. Through AAOE, uh, it was like drinking out of a fire hose. The ability that AOE has given the members to come to an annual conference and walk in to have all these resources available to them, it speaks volumes. The knowledge exchange, 
is the number one thing about the value. It's important, I think, for all of us to understand in our professional careers that this is a moment in time that we all need to stand up together for the benefit of the patient and the physicians that have dedicated their lives to caring for our communities. I think the future of AAOE is that the new members carry the torch that has been lit by the founding members. They have done the hard work and we have reaped the benefits of their labor. Now it is time for us to pass it forward. AAOE has been here for 50 years. We hope to be here for another 50 years. The young up and coming leaders are, are vital to the success of AAOE in the future. And when you look at where we come from and where we are today and the programs that are offered to AAOE, there's no comparison. So our legacy is actually the next people coming down the road, what they can get from us. Whenever you're at a crossroads, you have 1,600 colleagues that you can contact. But it's, it's really the best of what a group of people who are dedicated to their careers and dedicated to the care of their communities can do when they're motivated and they are of goodwill. There is a need for this professional organization because healthcare is changing so quickly and so fast that no one individual can keep up with it. You're all part of this and you're all part of this success and more importantly you're going to be part of the next 50 years and the future of the success of this organization and I'm depending on you.